Welcome to part two. This is your host, still David or Dave, and we're still doing the My Book World Edition White Light 3 terabyte hacked or upgraded NAS hard drive. So in this part of the video, I'm going to be taking this one apart. And uh, okay, so we don't need this. I'm going to put this away and the Ethernet cable. And these are probably some sort of tools that you will need in order to get this done. Uh, the first is a, just a, your general set of uh, screwdrivers. Uh, these, uh, this one has a nice assorted array of various bits with it. Also the torque bits, which are really important if you want to take apart, uh, let's say, hard drives. I'll put a link uh, of this in the description box below where you can find it on eBay. So this is that. And then you're going to need some sort of a set of prying tools. Um, you can get these also on eBay. If I will remember what this set was, I'll put it in the description box uh, below as well. If not, I'll just uh, note the keywords that you need to type onto eBay to find this. But I'm generally just going to be using this metallic rod or me metallic prying piece so the rest will pretty much not be needed. All right, let's get ready and dive into. All right, so what you need to do is insert a sort of a flat surface. You can, you can also use a flat headed uh, screwdriver for this and insert it right around here where the, I forgot to mention in the first uh, video, this is the Kensington uh, lock port or opening. I don't know how much that is uh, needed nowadays, but nevertheless. So you want to put this piece underneath between the a mask uh, and the support housing plastic. And you want to go underneath so you fall almost like right in. Then you just want to push downwards. Then you go all around, yeah. That was that sound, nothing broke. Uh -huh. All right, now we take a look, visual inspection. So you see the case has separated a little bit from the front mask. The body has separated from the surrounding plastic. Then we repeat the procedure on the other side. Okay, let's see visual inspection. Perfect. It has also separated. Then we just slide the front side of the plastic well, depending on your orientation, in my case, it's going to be towards the right. You could also uh, use fingernails in order to do this. Well, that's it. Well, basically, uh, if you've taken apart any Western Digital external hard drives, you've basically taken apart all Western digital products. So this part of the mask just slides off. Let's have a little look inside. If I broke anything, you can see the numbers. And these are uh, the four latches or locking legs that you want to watch out for so you don't break them. They're all intact. Perfect. All right, let me put this away. And this is it. This is the three terabyte Western Digital Red, 3.5 inch uh, SATA 3 hard drive, NASware 3.0. And this is a white label. I did some research on other forums and I um, came to an interesting explanation why this label is white and not red as it should be. It's supposedly still a, a red edition from the Western Digital, just that they didn't rebrand it uh, to sort of apply the red sticker as we, we 
we would usually see uh, on these two uh, type of hard drives. So it's still a Western Digital Red edition. Okay. Uh huh. This is the transparent piece of plastic. This is your <laughs> Night Rider, if you want to call it. Therefore, gauge indicator or drive activity. Okay, then you have this very massive metallic piece that is screwed through four uh, Phillips screwdrivers onto the uh, aluminum body of the hard drive. Two screws are underneath. You're going to see this when we take apart this upper side of the metallic casing. This is uh, where the uh, controller is. All right, now this is important. Uh, this is the place where you would install a very small 5 volt or 12 volt uh, fan. You would probably attach it onto this metallic piece here, not underneath because there isn't enough room underneath because this is very snugly fit. And then you would um, fixate it with four probably Phillips screws from the opposite side uh, and how you would power this I'll show you that in a minute when we will take apart uh, both these metallic pieces and look at the circuitry board so first we got to take apart or take out this transparent piece so again I'm going to use my metallic prime piece all right this is easy but this part is always tricky Alright, it's still intact. Alright, we put this away. And there you have uh, these, um, there are actually four of them also here and underneath here. Sort of a rubber insulators or, yeah, there are rubber insulators for the metallic legs that go into this housing. This is to furthermore prevent uh, micro vibrations or vibrations in general. If you're, for instance, taking this large uh, NAS hard drive on the road, if it's not in a place all the time, so if, if it is moving, so that uh, it doesn't diminish the lifetime of the hard drive, it is there to prevent those micro vibrations uh, as much as possible. Then, of course, we need to lift this up. All right, and we flip it over. And then we slide it out. Okay. Uh, these two rubber insulators stayed in the housing, so I'm going to take them out. Okay, now this is the the main body, main plastic body of the NAS enclosure. This part has become a little bit yellow, but that doesn't really uh, damage or prevent its function from working flawlessly. Any numbers inside? Nothing, all right. I'm going to put this right next to here. We're just going to attach these back on. All right, now if we want to separate or see the controller, we're going to need a, a Phillips bit or a Phillips screwdriver to remove this Phillips three screws. So I'll prepare my tools. Okay, so I'll probably use this one.
All right. Um, now, in order to pry this open, you see that this upper side of the metallic casing has uh, two legs that go beneath the lower metallic case, which also has two legs in order to lock it into place, in order to prevent it from going uh, too much up. So in order to remove this, we're just going to slide this part downwards. There you go. So this is how it looks like, uh, the lower, more massive part of the metal casing. Like I said, four screws, four Phillips screws that attach to the aluminum body of the hard drive. And as I mentioned, you would fit a fan on top of that, on top of here, not below this metallic case, because uh, you probably won't be able to see it, but it's, yeah, now you see it, you know, see there's very little space here, so you can put it underneath. All right, we're going to put this down. And this is the controller. All right, let's take it out of its metallic case. Let's put this here. All right. All right, let's uh, have a look, a closer look at the components. Now this is the main processor. I'll try to zoom as much as I can. Uh, so you see it's a uh, Oxford Semiconductor OX uh, E 810 DSC. According to the data sheet, which I will also be linking in the description box below, it's a 367 megahertz processor. All right, now this is this would be the the cache or the RAM. It's a Hynix uh, standard chip. It's a 128 megabytes DDR2 type of RAM. Let's see if I can zoom in. Come on, focus. Come on. All right, now I think you can see it much better. I'm basically recording this video with my uh, Samsung Galaxy Note 4 smartphone uh, for your reference. Uh, these are some of the numbers on the board and here. And the rest of uh, these chips that are here and also underneath, they are also in the description box below. I'll list it so you can uh, look them up yourself if you want. And of course you have these electrolytic uh, capacitors and everything. All right, let's flip it over. All right, also some numbers. This is really important. For instance, you want to re replace your board. These are the numbers that you would be, you know, looking for, or also this one as well. And here you also have these chips, which are also, uh, probably won't be able to zoom in uh, so you could look them up yourself so I'm just going to write uh, the names or the text that is on there in the description box below now this is interesting here this is where you would put a sort of a holder for a um, you know your usual uh, 3 volt or 3.7 volt rechargeable battery in order to install a sort of a world clock. It's a uh, mod that you can do on this NAS hard drive. For more information on that, I'm linking the link in the description box. And of course, if you wanted to uh, attach uh, the fan onto this case, uh, this metallic piece uh, of the housing in order to improve cooling and the lifetime of the hard drive itself, now, depending on what type of a fan you would get, if it would have been a 5 volt uh, or a USB fan, you could probably just 
uh, use these rails here you know the, the extreme part, uh, side of this one and the lower part here in order to get that extra power let's see if it is on the other side no it isn't so you would have to solder it solder two wires right here but you could also use the 12 volt a rail that is coming from the DC power input and also uh, use the 12 volt power supply to power up that fan if you were to attach it onto there that does require to have a little bit of uh, soldering skills but you know if you're a, a nice uh, handyman and you you know your way around power tools I'm sure that won't be a problem so I think for this part uh, oh yeah I have to mention also that even though this is a gigabit port uh, in in practice or in reality you won't be able to achieve such speeds so you know 125 megabytes per second and that is because of the limitation of the processor uh, I think it's an ARM processor um, I don't know the exact, the exact details I will think I'll find the article where this is explained I'll link it in the description box so you know this gigabit option is just for marketing purposes so the network speeds will be significantly uh, well I won't say significantly lower but just you know adequate you'll be still able to watch movies and do other uh, things but this is just you know sort of uh, false advertising as usual and of course you know as I was right you have six LEDs or three pairs these are the ones that you know give you all the drive activity and capacity gauge functions well I think that's pretty much about it all right should we wrap that up well I don't think I need to show you how to put everything this back together yeah I don't think so all right so in part three I'm going to uh, of course this will all be pretty much uh, assembled together maybe I won't put uh, this mask back on to the main plastic body because you know I still want to show you that this is still a uh, three terabyte ha hack or upgrade or mod so I won't be probably attaching that uh, but nevertheless in part three we'll be attaching this NAS drive probably firstly to the computer laptop a Dell Vostro 8 A860 an older model and then I'll be attaching it to the router and then we'll be through the laptop and wireless connection we'll be testing it and logging into the graphic user interface and uh, looking a little bit uh, on the features of thereof so I was th probably thinking uh, whether I should also remove this plate so you can see underneath but I think that's necessary uh, so for this part of the video again I'm done so uh, looking forward to part three I hope you are as well mm -hmm. this is David uh, telling you goodbye and we'll see you in part three